America, young girls are expressing their desire to live pure lives. This often means pledging to remain a virgin until their wedding day. Purity for me is purity of the mind, purity of speech. It's what I watch, it's what I spend my time doing. Um, it's emotional purity, you know, it's my heart. It's a complete wholeness of a woman. And that's, you know, that's what I've chosen. Many girls will gather at purity balls with their fathers to ask for their help and protection to achieve this goal. I adore being your daughter. When you spend time with me, you make me feel like a beautiful princess. A close father-daughter relationship is seen as absolutely crucial for a daughter's choice of future husband. My prayer for you is that God would bring you a young man, a young man that would have a heart like many of the men here this evening, a man of integrity with whom you can join together, have bunches of little kids of your own. I love you, Rachel. One in six girls in America take a purity pledge, and girls as young as five are encouraged to attend the purity ball to absorb its message. Purity was very much a concept that I grew up with, but then once I hit reality and the real world, it was such a shock and such a harsh learning curve at that point. Now I feel like I'm at least six years behind in my life. The purity movement is controversial in America, we followed a group of young girls as they prepared for the father and daughter purity ball in Colorado Springs in May 2008. It sounds unrealistic in our day and age. It's not the exact path that I went down, personally. But if it can work, how cool would it be to say, I've kissed but one man in my life. How cool would that be? How special, how cherished, how set apart. Why not shoot for the fairy tale? Randy Wilson is the national director at the Family Research Council. He and his wife, Lisa, created the Purity Ball from their home 10 years ago. We wanted to create an event that was so spectacular to the heart of a daughter with her father that that, that would be um, a turning point, maybe for their relationship, maybe even for future generations. When a father engages in the heart of his daughter, the result is going to be a daughter that feels valued and doesn't necessarily run out to get validations physically from young men. That she would say, I am valuable and worthy, and I expect to be treated like this by the future men in my life. There are hundreds of purity balls taking place across the United States, but the Wilsons is the original and grandest of them all. We just wanted elegance and romance and something so extravagant that it would touch the intrinsic soul of a young girl. At the ball centerpiece is a homemade wooden cross around which all the attending daughters will dance and pledge their commitment to a pure life. There's a core question that the feminine, if you will, the woman has in their being that needs to be answered. And uh, that is, am I beautiful? Am I worthy of being pursued? Because they do go through that, that time where they feel awkward. They don't feel beautiful. It must be enforced by the father, the man in their life. If they do not get that enforced, reinforced by their father, they will go outside the home to get the answer to that question. So, in the rehearsal room, when we were in New Life, Remember Today is rehearsal day for the ballet so section mind, of the ball. The it's led by Christian, room. Randy and Lisa's second Watch daughter, me, okay? who is 20, that looks beautiful, still okay? a virgin, so, Lydia, and still Lydia, living at home. When you come in, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a walkthrough so that you girls... I don't have a desire to visit the bar or spend time in certain places or spend time with certain people because um, I've just chosen a higher standard for my life. And that is from, number one, um, my dad, the relationship I have with my parents, and then showing me, you know, how to live a wholesome, healthy life. Go. Go. 
go around. And so yeah, I've never had a desire to oh, okay. even date another young man unless it's going to be completely intentional. You know, I wouldn't want to bring anything unhealthy into my body. One of the reasons we've gone the direction we have in culture and society today is, is because of the absence of father, particularly in a young woman's life. It's, you know, you look at that for a moment in the young girl that's five and six and seven years old, who would you like to marry when you grow up? Well, my daddy. He is in her life the significant individual. Their father's everything. We're living in a world where nothing, there's no values, there's drugs and alcohol and, and sex and partying. And I look at it and I go, well, that can't be what God put them here on earth for. Kevin Moore is Randy's right-hand man, his second in command at the Purity Ball. He has three daughters, his eldest is Rachel, who is 17 and has never dated. Oh my goodness, the drama. You know, you have people who will date for one week and then split up the next, or they'll, uh, and they've gone through like three or four boyfriends in the last month. It seems like a big pain to me, you know, to go through the emotions of it. Oh, he broke up with me. Oh, I feel so unloved. Oh, oh, there's another guy, ha! <laughs> and it just, it's a continuous cycle that um, I would rather not get into. I'm not interested in somebody messing their mind up for the rest of their lives. I'm not interested in them getting cancer of the cervix. I'm not interested in them getting a venereal disease. I'm not interested in them meeting the wrong person and suffering and going through a divorce. I understand pain. It took 10 years of me being a single parent. Okay, take raising two kids by myself from age uh, one and a half and three to until I married again. That's the life that's out there for some of our kids. And it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. I mean, this was in the 70s I went through this. This is now 2008. The 70s were a lot milder than what's going on now. I don't want that for my kids. The father-daughter purity ball is a <laughs> week away, giving the girls time to decide on their dresses. You know, it's, it's been a part of our family's tradition to go to these balls for about, okay, my first one was 10, so about six years now. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty special. <laughs> your dress looks pretty. Oh, yeah. I like yours. And what does purity mean to you? Well, to me, it means uh, not having an intimate relationship before I get married and to keep my heart pure before God and um, wait until I'm married. So saving my kiss for uh, the wedding. That's what I want to do. And what's wrong with being intimate before your wedding day? Uh, in the scriptures it says that uh, you shall not do that. It's uh, one of the Ten Commandments. And to me, I'd rather not. I just, I was raised that way and it seems safer to wait until you're married. And if your husband waited too, then it's way safer. So, so which one of the Ten Commandments is it? Let's see. You shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. That was... So, um, that was uh, number seven. Seven, yeah. But it's not adultery unless you're married, so. Mm -hmm. But you know, that person, that one person you are going to marry someday, you, you are going to marry them, you know. Um, so when you do marry them and you've had a relationship with a person before, uh, maybe a couple of people, maybe more than a couple, <laughs> um, then, it, you know, it's kind of like cheating on them. You know, I, I really don't think it's fair to them, especially if they waited. Um, Do you expect the boy to wait? Um, why not? 
they can. And you were saying that you would like to save your first kiss for your wedding day. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to, yeah. What, what happened if you didn't like the way he kissed? <laughs> I probably would. He'll probably take care of that one. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, probably he will kiss really good, so I hope. There was a trusting faith in these girls. If they just waited, cherished, and protected their inexperience, then all would be well. The purity movement is too young to assess the impact of divorce on its followers. God gave this gift to you on the day you were born, said the queen, because he loves you so dearly. And now, continued the king, this kiss is yours to keep or to give away. But use wisdom, my daughter, warned the king, and save your kiss for the man you will marry. Never part with it for the sake Once of Once I've found a man who I think I might want to get to know a little better, I'll take him to my dad for inspection. Um, inspection. Inspection. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'll spend a lot of time with my dad. And um, if um, it's maybe the right guy, I'll do group dating with my friends where they get their... Um, I don't want to say boyfriends because they won't be, what should I say? They're rather that they may be yeah. interested in. Yeah, them. And um, we'll all go out to dinner with our parents and <laughs> we'll talk and get to know each other. And um, will you be allowed to spend time alone together? Um, At a certain stage. Yeah. Yeah, imagine it would progress and that would be an important to have a conversation mm -hmm. without mom and dad just eavesdropping over the ear. Anna Lane is 11 years old. This year, she'll be attending her fifth purity ball. This is my dress for the purity ball. It's the prettiest one I've had yet. Um, I love the color and the way it opens in the front and all the beads. Um, I'm gonna feel like a princess when I walk into that ballroom. And I love it when it swirls and it always feels just so light and airy. The shawl's really cool. And tell me honestly and truthfully, do you look at the other girls' dresses and think, I wish I had that dress? No, I know that my dress was picked out by me and my mom and my grandma and affirmed by my dad, showing that he cares about what I wear. If I chose a dress that he didn't like, he'd say no instead of just letting me wear it. Hannah went to her first purity ball with her father, Ken, when she was seven years old. I think it's very important for girls to have a relationship with their father. It mirrors how our Heavenly Father cares about us. If girls don't have a relationship with their fathers, they'll turn to other males, and um, that will often end in heartbreak and anguish. It's just sad when fathers aren't in involved in their daughter's lives. When you date one-on-one -on -one individually, as girls especially, our emotions become involved and we give little pieces of our heart away. And when we give little pieces of our heart away, when it comes to the time when we get married, we don't have a whole heart to give to our husbands, you know? And so um, what I did is I gave little pieces of my heart away um, over time. And uh, I actually got engaged before to another person before I was married and uh, obviously gave a huge part of my heart away at that point in time. And it was a very painful process going through that breaking up and um, healing from that and then coming again to the place where I was willing to date again a little bit. And even though at that point I was a Christian and it looked very different, um, it was still hard to overcome those hurts and those pains that I had, you know accrued during the dating process. So, What do you think of what your mom's just said? I think that it was brave of her to be able to come through that and not give up to misery and despair for the rest of her life and say I'm never going to see a boy again because otherwise she wouldn't have met my dad and I wouldn't be here. Is it hard to talk about this when you're, when you're only 11? Because I know it'll happen one day and I I want to be ready. Her heart 
heart's beating now Cause her father's not there It's a thing she's always wanted Randy and Lisa Wilson are the grassroots leaders of America's purity movement They have five daughters and two sons She cried She wasn't meant to be the eldest daughter, Laura, she has set a high standard for her four sisters. Having taken the pledge, she remained a virgin till her wedding day, 18 months and ago. I hadn't dated anyone until um, I met this young man. And uh, it was just wonderful because we were in it. It was intentional. We were getting to know each other's hearts, where we wanted to go in life, what our dreams were. And did you hold hands? We didn't. Now, we decided early on that we didn't want to add any of that kind of, um, any kind of physical touch because we felt that would be distracting from getting to know the heart of the other person. So I don't even need to ask if you kissed him before you got married? No. Both of us had made up our minds separately, we, and we didn't even know that we had both agreed to do this in life, but we wanted to save our first kiss for our wedding day, and that's what we did. I mean, I don't know whether you're mad or the bravest person <laughs> I've ever met. Uh, not. I wouldn't say I'm mad because it was very hard, especially after we're engaged. It's like, oh, that would be so wonderful. But there was something even more special to know that we had waited. I mean, a kiss awakens everything within you. All of a sudden, everything within you wants to respond. And I wanted to wait until the wedding day where it was appropriate, where everything could respond. And it was beautiful. And we have... No regrets. Lauren's father, Randy, conducted the wedding ceremony. After the kiss, everyone just was in uproar, applauding. I don't know, the whole world just went out of focus and it was like, oh my goodness. Lauren had known Brett for just eight weeks before he proposed. Their engagement lasted for six months, during which Brett was posted away with the military for five. And were you his first girlfriend? I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I came along a little later in life, but yeah, so. How did that come about then? Had he, had he dated other girls? Mm-hmm, he had. Then he took a break until he met me. Not all the girls in the purity movement have had such a trouble-free journey to the altar. Jessica was brought up in the purity movement in Colorado. She is now 27. I had a fantastic childhood. My parents were so caring and loving and they were very much involved. My mother, my father worked and my mother stayed at home and raised my brother and myself. My mom started a Victorian girls club when I was younger and we dipped candles. We sewed patchwork quilts. Uh, we took sewing lessons. I sewed my entire wardrobe one summer. We had bees. We made beeswax candles. We had our own honey. We had chickens. Um, Goodness, you, you name it, it was Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Jessica lives in Colorado Springs, a stone's throw from where she was brought up. I, I didn't even have a boyfriend throughout high school. Um, boys were just kind of something that was there and was very exciting, but was very taboo and off limits. And I, I mean, even I was embarrassed to talk about boys with my mom. And um, it was just presented to me that, you know, you don't really do anything with a guy at all <laughs> until, you know, a suitable young man comes along and then he'll talk to your parents. And if they approve and think that this is something that they want to go forward with, then they would allow him to court me. Jessica was 19 before she was given permission to date her first boyfriend. Her world came crashing down when she broke her purity pledge. The gentleman that I was with, he was very much in the purity movement as well. And it just happened. We never planned it. And there was no alcohol involved, nothing bad. It just happened. And the guilt, oh my goodness, the guilt was awful. Um, and we, so we didn't tell anybody and we tried to just not do it and you know repent to god and do everything that we'd been taught um but it it kept happening and then um i, I as a result of 
not having any education in that field and not being prepared for it, um, I did get pregnant. I didn't know anything else. All I grew up with was my parents and church and my church friends. And everything else was kind of viewed as um, secular and worldly and, and not godly. I just broke down and I cried and I said, Mom, I gotta tell you something. I was like, I've completely messed up and I'm pregnant. And you can only imagine the, the thickness in the room and the, just the feeling that was there. And she cried, I cried. She brought my dad in and she's like, he just has something to tell you. And so I told him and he just, he, he started to cry and that was hard. <laughs> I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think my mom still holds it over, over my head because up until that point, she trusted me and she trusted my ability to make decisions. And ever since then, she just, she treats me as a lesser person. She still doesn't think I'm capable of making my own decisions to this day. She still doesn't trust me. And she kind of uses that an ex as an excuse to tell me that I don't know what I'm thinking and I don't know my own mind and I'm away from the Lord and she kind of writes me off as a person and our relationship has suffered and pretty much fall fallen apart because of that. Ever since that, that time, things have been very much severed. I lost my virginity at 13 to a 16-year-old girl. At the time, it did not seem like what we call molestation today, but there was not any emotions. It was purely a physical thing. By the time I was 15, there was a 20-year-old girl. Consequently, as we get down the road, I have nine children from seven different women. There's David, David, Justin, Timothy, and Derek, and I haven't seen David or Justin, I mean David or Timothy, and then I, we have um, three girls, and then their names are Juliet, Ashley, and my sister Kalisha. Kalisha, who is 16, and Taylor, who is 10, are David's youngest children. Kalisha, let me have a uh, uh, alcohol swipe there. They're in that uh, totem right there. They're the more used to the mechanics to of sex than the average purity girl, as their father fertilizes cattle for a living. And on the right ovary, we have eight. And on the left, we have ten. And would you like to marry a guy like your dad? Honestly, not with the way he had been. Um, no, dad's really... I don't know. He'd be he's he's kind of uh, on his own, so he's a, he'd be a hard guy to stick with and to actually settle down. I don't know that he'll ever totally settle down, so it'd be really hard, especially. And then in his younger years when he rodeoed, that that'd be tough too. And no, I wouldn't settle down with somebody like Dad. That'd be hard. <laughs> David doesn't want his daughters to repeat his past mistakes. In three days' time they'll be making the 500-mile journey to Randy's Purity Ball in Colorado Springs. And how do you feel when you wear that? It's different, because that's not how, what I normally wear, but um, I'm not used to dresses, but it makes you feel really elegant and pretty, and you just feel good in it, I guess. Because you, it's like empowering. <laughs> I just decided to go because that's what I want to do, and I'm strong in believing that you should save yourself for marriage. David is divorced from Kalisha and Taylor's mother and now lives alone. He is 63 and has advanced lung cancer. 
as I look back, I believe that the introduction into sexual intercourse has a lot to do with my lack of ability to maintain a long-term relationship with a woman. It's not really a good life, but he has kind of learned from it, and he doesn't want his kids to take that same path, and I think that it's really good he doesn't want to. In the last about three years, I think, um, I've met two of my brothers for the first time ever, along with their kids and wives and stuff, so it's really hard not seeing them. There's been a loss there. There's also been a loss for some of these children that haven't had a full-time father because of the circumstances. Out of nine children, the women and I not sat down and say, let's have a child. Those are all miracles, but not intended. And I don't recommend that anyone do it that way. In Colorado Springs, it's the morning of the father-daughter purity ball. It's not just girls that are influenced by the purity movement. Boys are expected to conform too. When you look at your sisters getting ready on the day of the ball, what do you think? Ah, that they're lovely. I just see in their eyes just how they come alive, like I am being beautiful. They love being beautiful and they glow and it's so fun to watch. Oh, Colton is, <laughs> is the eldest son, and in his first year at university in Virginia. <laughs> what is, what is the and have you started dating? Not yet, not yet. I'm not in a relationship yet. Um, still, still waiting, still seeing what, what's going to happen, what God will bring. And have you kissed a girl? <laughs> I have never kissed a girl. I have yet to kiss a girl. Um, and. Yeah, I'm a, I have realized that I am a, a, a sort of, what does my mom call it? Mom, what do you call it? I'm a, a physical... Romantic. Connect, right. So touch, proximity um, are, are things that just, um, I don't know, emotionally um, uh, stir me up, if you will. So um, I know that the kiss is an incredibly powerful thing. Yet to experience it, but I know. Um, and so I want to save that. I want to save that for um, that one young lady, even the kiss. Because um, I think that's just, it, not only is it a powerful thing, it's, it seals the relationship, if you will. Um, and just a public, just bestowing, like, here's the kiss. Here's the kiss that I've saved for you. Um, so. so would you wait till your wedding day? I think I would, yes. That's my plan. That's my plan. I'm going to save that for, for my wedding day. Once Jessica, who was born and brought up in the purity movement, had announced her pregnancy, there was only one option. Obviously, the right thing to do is to get married. I mean, that's what we knew. That's if you get pregnant, then you get married. That's what you do. And so he asked my dad for my hand, and my dad said yes, and we got engaged. And um, then about three months, two months later, I miscarried. And um, that was that was really hard experience. Um, but once that happened, I knew that I didn't want to be with him. I knew that I was engaged to him just because of the baby. And so after that, it was a relief. It was like, oh, thank God, you know, that that didn't happen because he wasn't the right person for me. Did your parents pray for you at this oh, moment? Oh gosh, <laughs> they're still praying for me. <laughs> they, um, yes, the answer to everything is, is always prayer and, and to pray about things and to go back to scripture and what scripture says. But they were praying for me through all these times. And, and after I was engaged to that guy and, and didn't get married to him, they were especially praying for me then, especially because no other young suitors came along. I don't, my mom would still like me to, to see me marry well. Jessica now lives with Steve, her partner of 18 months, who she met when she was managing a coffee shop. My parents were very upset. I was afraid to tell them 
for a good three or four months. And when they did find out, uh, my mom nearly exploded with anger and told me that Steve could go to hell. I mean, I, my parents barely even know Steve, and they, they have no desire to get to know him, which breaks my heart because he is such a huge part of my life. Her mom doesn't even give me the time of day. We recently had a little um, issue where her, her mom tried to, to corner me and um, tell me how things were going to be, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't mean to her, I wasn't rude to her, but, but I stood up for myself and I had to let her know that, that I'm not a 16-year-old kid, that, that I am a 27-year-old man, and, and that, you know, I'm, it's Jessica's choice to, to date me, to live with me, and, and nobody else's. And, and then what je makes Jessica happy is what I'm concerned about, not, not what makes anybody else happy. So. Did um, Jessica's mom have a, have a solution to your relationship then? That I disappear, basically. Each week, the Wilson children line up the... for their father's blessing. Well, Father God, these are your treasures, your gifts that you've given to us, and we ask that you speak your life and your blessing. Lauren, you're, you're beautiful, a joy and a treasure to us. And you are victorious one. That's part of your name and the meaning of it. And you will overcome those things that come across your path in life. Lord, best you can keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and turn his face toward you and give you peace. Love you. Colton, you're, you're a man of God. And uh, your name actually means leader of men. Christian. You are beautiful, a joy and a treasure as well, and your name means free spirit. And uh, that exemplifies everything that you were growing into. Jordan, you are beautiful and a joy and a treasure as well. Your name means compassionate one. Though again, your name means man of honor, and I see that in you. Kaylin, you are beautiful, and your name means uh, lover of mankind, and God will use you in a mighty way. stand for this matriarch because she is God's gift to me and the Lord bless you and keep you Lord make his face shine upon you be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father Son Holy Spirit I love you How have you managed with seven children? I mean, have you ever felt really exhausted, oh. depressed? Oh, yes. Can you tell us Absolutely. There have been days when, um, or seasons of life, especially during pregnancy, which has been really hard for me, where it's been really hard. I had four children under five, and it was wonderful. When I look at their little faces, it was so wonderful. But I, I didn't think I did a great job. I mean, I was, I was so exhausted. Um, but I, I had to turn to God. I, I remember just going face down in my living room, just Thank God. So yes, I've dealt with depression. I've dealt with complete exhaustion. I've dealt with, I don't know how, how I can be the best mom for these kids. And you had miscarriages. We, had, we lost five children. And so every child was a gift. How did you cope with losing five children? It was very painful. Very painful. Each one was a loss. And I know some people treat miscarriages as a stubbed toe. It's a death. It was very painful. And the children grieved. They lost, you know, they, they were part of the loss. It was very painful. I would do every day again to hold you older four as toddlers in my lap one more time. And then you, the next three, when you came along, I didn't even know what was coming. And you've shaped me and my heart so much more than I could have ever shaped you. And I am so grateful. <laughs> Come here, Gail. Thank you. Oh, I love you. When 
I was a teen, my mom was not well, and my dad had an addiction problem. It was gambling, so I, I didn't see him, so I was raising myself. And I didn't get the guidance, I didn't have an adult step in, I didn't have any mentors. It took 10 years for me to finish college because I was with, going with the culture, having a good time. The desire to learn from past losses has led men like Kevin and Randy to be fiercely protective of their daughters. Do some people think you're a killjoy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Or that you're holding back women. I've heard it said that uh, they think I'm controlling and I'm patriarchal, which they, they see as a negative. You know, I'm about my daughters growing up with as much liberty and freedoms as any other woman in society. I'm not about controlling. I see it more as uh, launching. It's not about obsessive fathers. It's not about coddling our children. It's about a bigger picture of expressing dignity, worth, and launching our daughters into healthy relationships with men because they respect themselves and they have been taught by their father that this is a standard that they should expect to be treated with incredible dignity. lavish affair piped to the accompaniment of Hollywood film scores. Well, the key piece, I believe, in this purity ball that we do is the covenant that I have the fathers sign. We read together this covenant that says, I, as you know, my daughter's father, will live a life of purity and integrity. It sets a standard whereby the daughter will then measure other men that come into her life. You know, is this man a good man? Is he like my father or is he not? So it gives them a foundation, a place to work from. It feels royal. I've never been to Buckingham Palace, okay? But if I had a picture of knighthood and, you know, chivalry and manliness, I want, I want her to have that. I want her to have all of that for herself. Around 70 fathers and their daughters attend the ball, which starts with the Wilson children serenading their father. I just want to say thank you for living out what you teach and for making this event, you know, the Father Daughter Purity Ball, a lifestyle and an everyday thing. I adore being your daughter. When you spend time with me, you make me feel like a beautiful princess. And I know that um, when I find that special someone, that you will play a huge part in that because uh, I want him to be like you. You're just so awesome. I'm already crying. <laughs> You're just... <laughs> Dad! You're so amazing. And I can't... I can't go. I want to move into a, a time that we, we call our, our covenant, which is a, a very important and I think the most significant part of, of this evening. You know, you've heard it said, and I've, I've read in the Word, that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But tonight, we as men will stand between his evil schemes and life and freedom for our daughters. Well, our daughters have been waiting for strong fathers to cherish them and express their worth and value. 
They are waiting for you to stop and look in their eyes. This generation of fathers can and I believe will take back territory that the enemy has stolen. We'll speak the first word, I, and then I'll wait for everybody to speak the names of their daughters. And then we'll continue on. Is that all right? I've got five to say, so, you know, give me a little time here. All right? I, Ty, Lauren, Hannah Christian, Rosen, Jordan, Cameron, Kaylin, choose before God to cover my daughters as her authority and protection in the area of purity. I will be pure in my own life as a man, a husband, and a father. I will be a man of integrity and accountability as I lead, guide, and pray over my daughter and my family as the high priest in my home. This covering will be used by God to influence generations to come. Now grab your pen, dads, again and fill in that name. Do you think um, a girl goes very wrong if she isn't a virgin when she gets married, if she has sex before marriage? I think she's just gotten robbed of something that's very precious. Is that the end of life? And does that mean she's no good? No. That, that would be a lie. She's just missed out on something a, a whole lot better. And it's not because of something I believe, it's something that God says. Father God, this has been a powerful evening so far of these fathers agreeing together and speaking aloud words of commitment and covenant. Do you think you'll be tempted? Yeah, everybody's tempted, but just kind of like your own willpower. Like if you can like have the power in yourself to not do it, to know what you want, if you're a firm believer in it, then you can last. And hopefully your husband can too. <laughs> Her decision of whether or not she is going to have sex with a person should not necessarily be on whether or not she had may have signed a piece of paper. It should be on what's right and wrong inside of her. None of us are perfect. We're fallen people. We're messed up. We need help. <laughs> we need all the help that we could get. I have just seen this purity ball as help in my life, help for me to love my daughters, help for me to care for them, help for me to be a father, like the Heavenly Father. Do you have any sympathy for the argument that you know it's not a bad thing to have half a dozen lovers before you get married? Do I have sympathy for the argument? I have sympathy for their hearts but not for the argument. You think it's wrong? I do, because I think there's so much risk involved. There's so much risk in that kind of promiscuity. Are you talking about broken hearts and disappointment? Well, also sexual diseases, um, abuse. I mean, this is one of the most sexually chaotic generations ever. And so I just, I just think there's tremendous consequences in those kind of choices. And is the answer to that question, am I beautiful, ever no, you're not? Oh, I hear that from young women. Um, at times they don't feel beautiful at all. So I've got to come to them. You are. Let me tell you who you are. You are beautiful. They may not believe it, but I keep speaking that. So they begin to know that the man in their life, the father at that time, thinks of the most beautiful woman in the world. It isn't that what any woman wants to hear and wants to know. One of the media outlets came and they actually said that they, it looks incestuous what's going on. That uh, is a lie. We have a healthy father-daughter relationship. My physical relationship is with my wife. But is it unnatural that a father should love and cherish and want the aspirations that his daughter feel like a princess. I don't think so. You truly are a blessing. God's word says he knit you together in your mother's womb. Tonight, Emma, I would like to say to you that you will get farther in your walk 
with the Lord and accomplish more for Him. Kind of giving my purity to my father is very weird to me. I'm so glad I didn't marry that guy that my parents had picked for me when I was 21. I am glad that I was able to start my own business. I'm glad I went back to college. I'm glad that I have a great career now and I have a wonderful man in my life who is my best friend and is not someone that my parents picked for me. But oh, the experiences I've had and the life that I've lived, and I, I just wouldn't trade that at all. I mean, yes, it was very difficult being in the purity movement and telling my parents I had got pregnant. But since then, the life that I've lived, and uh, it's just been fantastic. <laughs> Jessica was crowned Miss Colorado in 2006. She is now training to be a lawyer. Are you dying to start dating? Hmm, I'm open to it. <laughs> you know, there have been a few men that have asked my dad permission to get to know me, which we've both said no, but other than that, nothing much. Oh, you've had a few. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, one was actually at the last ball that we were at. Um, but it was like, I didn't even really meet him. But um, he just asked Dad if he could get to know me, and Dad met with him a few times. And um, I don't know, we just decided it wasn't the right timing or the right guy, so. Two months later in July, Randy announced the engagement of his daughter Christian to Captain Chad Lewis. They will have their first kiss at the altar in early December. I have the honor of sending a melody or two. Yeah, I have. 